Welcome to all for this Palm Sunday service at the start of Holy Week and in these strange circumstances of lockdown. While it's good to log on to a service being streamed from elsewhere, and I'm very glad you have, let's remember that in our exile from each other, and so now in our homes, God promises to be with us, to guide us, and to feed our souls. Church buildings may be shut, but the church as the people of God is very much open for business, continuing to offer worship to God, providing spiritual direction, and giving support to those wondering what this time is all about. We begin our service this morning with a Palm Sunday hymn, Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. virtually, but no less really, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And may his peace be with you. We acknowledge together our need of God's forgiveness in words from the Book of Common Prayer. However good we may think we have been, we have all fallen short of the glory of God and are invited to look afresh to him for his mercy and forgiveness which flows freely from the death of his son, Jesus Christ, upon the cross. And so, together we pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We've followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We've offended against your holy laws. We've left undone those things that we ought to have done, and we've done those things that we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous, and godly life to the glory 
of your holy name. Amen. And may the almighty and merciful Lord grant us his pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The special prayer set for today, Palm Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our reading for this Palm Sunday, taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, and beginning to read at the first verse. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So much of what many of us expected to happen in these next weeks have been shredded, shredded and lost. Plans for the next few months have been torn up. Family gatherings over the Easter holiday have been forbidden. Schools are closed. Weddings postponed. Businesses shut down. Budgets rewritten. Jobs gone. The NHS preparing to be overwhelmed. And most devastating of all, lives have been lost without even the possibility of a loved one alongside. It's a time for the world and for our nation, a time of grief, pain, anguish, and confusion. In addition, for the Christian community, there's the loss of not being able to meet together to mark the events of Holy Week and Easter, events that are central to our faith, proclaiming the death, and the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. But we are learning to be church in a different way. Buildings may be closed, but the life, the worship, and the witness of Jesus' disciples continues. There was certainly no lockdown when Jesus entered Jerusalem at Passover time. It was busy. And the Gospel for today uses an interesting word to describe how it was that day in Jerusalem. The whole city was stirred. A word in the original which shares its root with that of an earthquake, an upheaval, a shaking, 
and everyone was asking, who is this? There was a strange irony in the expectations that Palm Sunday. On the one hand, the crowds thought Jesus was the long-awaited king coming to his capital to claim his throne. And acclaimed him with words from the Old Testament Psalms as the deliverer. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Cloaks and palm branches were laid out as a carpet for this most special of visitors. On the other hand, Jesus is on a humble donkey and knows he's on a road to suffering and to death. He knew the crowds had misunderstood and that the cries of Hosanna would turn to crucify, that the palms would turn to thorns, that the king would be condemned as a criminal, and the adoration would become ridicule. He knew all that and still chose to ride on. Such is the love of God for all, for you, for me, and for our eternal salvation. He came to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. He died for our sins and was raised on the third day. Well, we can't witness to Jesus in the usual ways this year with public processions and acts of corporate worship in church buildings. But we can, and I believe we must, make time to tell his story in our homes to read a part of a gospel, to listen and perhaps even join in with a hymn on the web, and to pray. Living out our faith in our homes is a forgotten dimension of our witness, and we do well to develop new patterns of discipleship at home, perhaps saying grace at mealtimes, telling the Christian story to the younger generation, placing a cross in a front window and playing perhaps the Alleluia chorus from Handel's Messiah. And the reason for all that is that I long for many more people to be stirred to ask, who is this Jesus? My prayer as we enter into the holy ground of this week is that through YouTube, stream services, our conversations over the phone, FaceTime, Zoom, text, TikTok, Twitter, whatever it may be that you use as communication, we may prompt, we may even promote, provoke many to ask, who is this Jesus? And depending on the answer to that question, our lives will be changed forever. If we say he is the only son of God, the fulfillment of the Old Testament promises, he is indeed the saviour of the world, and we turn from keeping him out of our lives to follow him as our Lord and our saviour, then we embark on life in all its fullness and receive that great gift of eternal life. If we dismiss him as irrelevant or worse, as a fraud, and say no to his invitation then we carry the consequences of our decision and will be answerable to him one day as the judge of the living and the dead. Our answer to the question, who is this, really does matter.
now declare our faith as Christian people in God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we turn to pray, and I lead us in our intercessions for this Palm Sunday. As we recall Jesus' journey into Jerusalem and his willingness to be vulnerable and subject to the decisions and the cruelty of others, so we pray today for the most vulnerable in our society and world. Father, we pray for an end to the spread of the coronavirus around the world, and especially in those places where there are few resources and limited medical facilities, where social distancing and good hygiene is more challenging, and where many are exposed to the ravages of this virus and are unable to avoid it. We pray, Father, for those today who are struggling for life, those who are dangerously ill, that in the midst of suffering and all their fears, they may receive and know the peace of Jesus Christ, your Son. We pray for those who care for the sick, for their protection, for our doctors and nurses and all medical staff that keep our NHS working. We pray for the provision of equipment, adequate testing, and again, for their protection. We pray, Father, for those who have been bereaved and unable to be with a loved one in their final days and hours, and then find they're unable to attend a funeral. We ask that you would comfort them in their grief. We pray, Father, for those whose livelihoods and work has disappeared overnight and are dependent on support from government and local agencies. We pray for the giving to charitable organisations not to dry up or decrease. And we pray for the Christian Church as it seeks to mark the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus of Nazareth without access to church buildings, without the usual patterns of worship and meditation, and without meeting one another. Help us to find new ways of marking these most significant events of history. And we pray for all in leadership, making decisions on a daily basis as they chart our way through this crisis. Give them, we pray, wisdom for the common good and for the longer term. And we pray for ourselves as we are faced afresh with the reminder of the fragility of the gift of life and our dependence upon the mercy of God. Help us, Father, we pray, to number our days, to redeem the time, to make the most of this opportunity and in the midst of it all, to know your peace in our hearts. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We conclude our prayers this morning by joining together in the prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples and which Christians down through the centuries and all around the world 
have been bold to pray. And so we join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And so we conclude this service together by singing another Palm Sunday hymn, All glory, Lord, and honour to thee, Redeemer King. for God's blessing as this service concludes, as we ask for him to be present in the midst of all that we are facing at this time. Christ crucified draw us to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, 
a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, those you love, those for whom you pray this day and forevermore. Amen.